I'm having so, are you guys having fun? I'm having so much fun. So, yeah, we're, we're gonna, we're gonna, let's pray. Father, you're so awesome. I don't even know what to say, God. I just want you to say every word and I'll just, you know, be here. And, I, and thank you, God, that you're here. You're so here. God, I touch every person here, God, right now. Every single heart. Holy Spirit, just fall right now on us and take us where you are and show us, show us the real power, the power of evangelism, the power of your, your presence. God, you're awesome. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so I'm, I'm going to talk to you about the power of evangelism. In case you were tired of evangelism already, strap yourself in, because <laughs> it's just going to be awesome. Uh, I, I didn't, when I came to this church, I was just looking for a place that wouldn't try to stop me from praying for the sick, because that, that's where a lot of the churches are. They're just afraid that you're not going to be glorifying God somehow by doing it. And I'm coming here, and stuff is just blowing up crazy, and it's not me. It's not my fault. <laughs> it's the Holy Spirit. It's because you guys are, are letting him do what he does best, Amen. and that is make disciples, enlarge the kingdom. Uh, and it, I was going to say it doesn't get any better than this, but it does. <laughs> I just can't imagine it yet. So let me just start off by saying... Uh, I got introduced as, as, as being evangelist Glenn Fink you know, at one point, and, and I'm going to tell you, I kind of, I would be uncomfortable with that, except that I'm, what the Holy Spirit told me when this started a couple, a couple weeks ago, he said, you are a teacher, it's right, you're not the office of evangelist, that's right, you're a teacher, and you're going to teach by example. And so I said, okay, well, we'll do that. And so we just started going out for power evangelism, and people started coming to it, and one time we had like 20 people, and the mall cops wanted to, what, what, what are you doing here? But it's, it's just crazy. So I'm, you remember this from Shepherd Bashiri, the fivefold uh, ministries, right? So I'm that little guy right there that goes in your ear, and hopefully it helps you understand, but there, God's going to raise other people who have this special anointing of evangelism, and we're seeing some of them right now. I mean, I don't know, where's Ivan? He, that, that man, oh my gosh, that's amazing. Holy Spirit's doing through him. And, and through uh, so, some of these young folks here, you know, I'm, I'm 51, and I'm just barely getting started. <laughs> these guys are 16, 17, 18, 19. They, they've got until the Lord comes back, or, or they get old and die when they, when they get done, right? That, that, that's that's going to be freaking amazing. So, uh, yeah. I'm sorry, I'm not being very eloquent tonight. I'm just blown away. But I want you know, to know, this is not about you operating in your gifting because my gifting is prayer or my gifting is helps or my gifting is administration. Sure, God will absolutely use you in that. But I'm going to tell you tonight that you can do evangelism. And there's a reason that you want to do evangelism, and I'll show you what it is, because it's just a natural thing. It's what we do. It's what we do. So let me tell you just a little bit about the gospel. Okay, I'm going to get the teacher stuff out here, right? The gospel comes from uh, the Greek word euangelion, and it literally means good news, right? But you know what? They never used this word outside the Bible. The only, the only time that was ever used outside the Bible in Greek literature is when they won, this, this city won a war that they, never, they had no chance of winning. And they're like, oh, you wouldn't believe the good news. And what it means is it's the almost too good to be true news, but it's true, but can you believe it's true? Oh, my goodness. Then Paul started using it for the gospel, what Jesus did for us, because that's how good it is. Jesus won the victory against, against death and sin, and that is really, really good news. So what I want you to know is you take euangelion, you translate it, in, transliterate it into English, and you can see that euangelion became evangelism. So the gospel is the good news of the kingdom, and that's what we call evangelism. So evangelism is just gospel. Evangelism isn't some special thing. You, do. you don't go to a class for it. I went to classes for evangelism. I hated them. I went door to door with people. I hated it. I would pray that people would not be at their, at their homes so that I could get count, get credit for having gone to the house but not having to talk about Jesus to anyone. I had my little religious survey and stuff. Oh, I was such a good Baptist. But you know what? It did not, it did not bless me. 
I am so tickled right now when I, I see these guys go. I didn't even have a chance to go out with these guys last week. I had my own thing going on because this is power evangelism is not about Saturday and Sunday. Power evangelism is about Monday through Friday and Saturday and Sunday. It's practice on Saturday and Sunday. It's the real thing at your job, at school, at, everywhere you go. And just seeing what God's doing is amazing. So just what I want you to understand is evangelism is all about sharing this almost too good to be true news. Someone just told me recently, man, I used to do drugs, but Jesus is way, way better than any drug I've ever had. And there's no bad side effects. I'm like, yes, it's good news. It's really, really good. So what is this good news about? Well, it's good news of the kingdom, right? That's what it's about. If it's about nothing else, it's about the kingdom. This kingdom is, is the fact that Jesus, okay, what does Jesus Christ mean? What's Christ? It's not his last name, right? Christ means the anointed one. Christ means the king. It's Jesus king. He's the king of the kingdom. That's what this thing's about. Evangelism is the good news about the kingdom. It's also the good news about love, right? Now, you can have a kingdom, and if you, if it, if you have a kingdom without love, you got the wrong kingdom. If you have love outside the kingdom, that's not love. It's something else. So the evangelism is the good news about kingdom and about the love, and it comes with power, which is awesome. The kingdom comes with power. I want you to know the gospel without power is not good news. And power without the gospel is the wrong kingdom. So you got it. They, they go together. You, look, people practice power all over the place. There's New Agers, there's witches and people like that, and they do have some power because we know that stuff's real, right? But it's nothing compared to the kingdom of God and the power of God. You can have power outside the kingdom, but you don't want that stuff. That'll mess you up. And the gospel, if it doesn't have that power, it can't help anybody, but it can. It can completely change your life. And that's, that's what this is all about. So I want you to understand that power comes from love. It comes from relationship. This is like this tree here, right? So you got the, the tree above the ground, and underneath the ground, you got roots, a root system that's even deeper than the tree and wider than the tree. So God wants to have this deep relationship with us because this whole thing, his kingdom is about, look, it used to be Garden of Eden, walk and talk with men in, in, the, in the cool of the day, and, and men and women were just in his presence, and they were loving God, and they didn't have any idea anything was wrong, and, and it was fine. God wants that back. Right? He wants that back. He wants to walk with you and talk with you and be with you. But what happens if you take the relationship away? You got this tree without roots. Well, that's dangerous. That thing can fall over. That thing is not going to survive. It might be beautiful now, but it's not going to survive. And it can hurt somebody. So if you have power, and this outward expression of, oh, yes, if, if, you know, like 1 Corinthians says, if I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, and I don't have love, I don't have that relationship, I'm nothing. It might, I might look like something. Oh, yes, here on this wonderful tree. I'm nothing if I don't have that i got to have love. That's what the kingdom is about, and that's what that relationship is about. Now, what if you just took away the, the tree part, and you just had that deep relationship with God, and you never left your prayer closet? Well, you'd probably enjoy a good time with God, but I tell you what, you'd be fruitless, because you would not help anybody in this world. And God's a, for God so loved the world... That's why we're in the world. You wonder, why do we have troubles and why do we have difficulties? It's because we're in the world. And we're in the world because we're going to change the world. We're not in the world to endure the world. We just got to hold on. Oh, man, all my life I, just, I learned you're just supposed to hold on till the very end. You're just going to, you know, we're saved and stuck. No, that's not what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to have power and relationship. We're supposed to have it, have it both. It's supposed to be deep and invisible, and it's supposed to be visible and effective to people. So... I want you to understand that, it, that this, this depth of relationship is very, very important. And tonight I've been amazed. Holy Spirit, you're amazing. Everything has been about that relationship. 
and the depth of it. Every single person who's gotten up here has talked about how this is, you know, in some degree, how this is a relationship and how important it is. So I want you to understand that power, it's not about what you say. It's only a little bit about what you do, but it is all about what you have become. What you have become is what the power is. That's where, that's where you get the power. You, you get it in the secret place with God. You don't get it by reciting you know, mantras to yourself or, or your affirmations and all that other stuff. If you do that apart from a relationship, you're just dry bones. You're nothing. But if you, in your relationship with God, exercise that relationship and become that, become love, become love, you'll see the kingdom. That's where the power comes from. That's getting plugged in. You're not plugged in, you're not going to do anything. So, I want you to understand that deep relationship only grows in secret. You know what? People, people will tell me, oh, wow, it's so neat to see you worship because I like to sign. Uh, when I, to me, that's just really worshipful. It gets my body involved with it and I'm so blessed that I learned sign language a little bit. Please don't come up to me and try to to engage me in sign language conversation because I will disappoint you. But uh, that's just the stuff you see. That's, that's there. If I don't have this, I got nothing. This depth is what's important. Jesus said, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word. My Father will love him. And we will come to him and make our home with him. Who wants to have God be a home in their life? Anybody? I'm telling you. There is nothing better than having God at home in your life. He lives there. He gets the run of the house. And you know what else? You're a kingdom property. You are a house fit for a king. You are not trash. I just feel real strong about this right now. You are not secondhand. You are not useless. You are not hopeless and unable to change. You are a house fit for a king. The king of the universe wants to live in you. He just wants you to accept that and say, yeah, Jesus, I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll do that. So yeah, deep relationship is like this battery behind, underneath your, your, your life. It, it grows and, and changes in, in you, and, and that's, that's what it's all about here. I want you to understand that this isn't something you know, that, that's just for super Christians, right? Power is available to everybody. Now, there's some of you, some of you guys here, you, you weight lift, and, and you look pretty amazing, it's, it's, I, you know, I wish. But <laughs> you may have amazing muscles, but I still got muscles. Every person in this room has muscles. And they're visible and effective to the degree you exercise them, right? That's important. What happens if this guy spends a year on the sofa eating Cheetos? He's not going to look like that. Power is available to everybody. That guy wasn't always amazing. He was a kid once, right? Little skinny arm kid. So... Power, I want you to understand, power is available to everybody. This is not for just the anointed people, okay? Now, so, okay, uh, there are people here who know how to cook and wash clothes. And the reason you can do that is because you spend a long time in prayer and fasting. And then when the Spirit moves you and the anointing to wash clothes comes on you, you just do that laundry, right? Is that what it is? Yeah, no, you do it, that, that's just what you do. And when you come fix a car, right, you get that, that, that fixing car anointing on you and just all of a sudden and the engine just hums. And it's, no, it's not like that. It's what you practice. It's what you practice over and over again. And you know what else? So, uh, Pablo is just mentioning, you go beyond what you can do. You step outside of your comfort zone. It hurts to develop muscles. But boy, it sure is nice to have them. Faith, power, kingdom, it's available. It's a question of whether well, you will stand out, whether you will step outside your comfort zone. I'm really comfortable here. I don't want to go talk to that lady. Holy Spirit's like, I want you to change your life. Well, 
there'll be other ladies. <laughs> yeah, there will. And you know what? He's not going to say, oh, you bad child. No, he's not going to do that. He's giving you an opportunity to do another push-up, to do another curl, to, to, to make a difference, to do another load of laundry and figure out how to do it for, to the glory of God. To put another brick in the wall, right? It's, it's a matter of, of just a little bit of time, and you can get to be what you're looking for. Power is not the same thing as maturity. Now, as you get mature and you practice power, you will see maturity come out of that. And it will be amazing. But it doesn't happen overnight. This guy did not get that overnight. Okay? If he did, he would... You know, well, anyway, it just doesn't happen that way. <laughs> right? You just ex wake up one morning and... <clears throat> the Incredible Hulk, right? That's not good. Uh, power does not equal favor. So it, it's not this special anointed guy who comes and, oh, yes, come and see the great man of God. He's anointed. He has power. No, nope, you all have power, and I'm going to demonstrate it to you tonight. You're going to see it. Get ready. Get ready. Yes, there's nothing better in the whole wide world. <laughs> there's nothing better. Power comes from believing and sharing the gospel. That's what it comes from. That's our set of weights we lift. And you know what's really cool about it? There's a gazillion ways to share the gospel. A friend of mine and I were talking about something I learned at, at the Power and Love Conference recently. We're going to go to a hospital and pick a floor. I'm going to pray, pick a floor, go to the nurse's station and say, you know, we really feel like God wants us to come pray for people. Can you show us the worst cases you have? And we'll go pray for them. That's stepping outside my comfort zone. When I see something that I cannot handle, that's outside my comfort zone. We talked about power evangelism, right? Okay, so Saturday. <laughs> We're going to change it up a little bit on Saturday. We're not going to do it at 5 o'clock on Saturday. Come at noon, and don't come to the mall. Come to Columbia Park, where they're going to have a Quidditch tournament. Anyone know what Quidditch is? Harry Potter, witches, sorcery, all that stuff. There's going to be a convention there. What a that awesome place to do power evangelism. They need to see some real power. Forget the brooms and junk like that. This is about Jesus. This is, this is so much fun. I'm just dying here. It's, it's, it's my job and the job of everybody who's a mature believer to keep stepping outside of our comfort zones. Because I'm going to tell you, it does not make me comfortable to think of doing that. That's not comfortable. That's like, oh, what if I say the wrong thing? Oh, no, I, I'm, not, I'm, not afraid of, I'm not afraid of it, but I don't want to offend them and cause, pull them further away from Christ. And I, have, I don't want to get in trouble with, you know, but it's okay. Because, yeah, coming outside of my comfort zone, putting up the weights a little higher, that's what I need to do. So how powerful is your relationship? You know, is, is you get like a little spark like, like that when you, when you touch someone, or is it more like that? Yeah. Yeah, that's what Jesus was. And Jesus said, the one who comes after me, the one who believes in me will do the things that I have been doing and greater things than these will he do. That's available to you because you're the one who believes in him and came after him. He went to the Father to, make it, to send the Holy Spirit. He knew that when he sent the Holy Spirit, we would have access to all the power of the Godhead. Yeah, yeah, but it comes out of your relationship. How about this? Can you, can you like just water like a little desert stream? Or are you more like Niagara Falls? Power. The, the bandwidth for your power comes out of your relationship with God. How serious are you about this relationship thing? And I'm not trying to make anyone feel guilty. I'm just telling you. You find power in a secret place. You do not find power just... Trying to, trying to make it happen on your own or, or learning a method or some, someone teaches you what the words to say. Uh -uh. None of that stuff. You learn, you get power at the foot of the cross. You can't share what you don't have. If you don't have a relationship, you can't share it. You've got to share, your, share it. If you have it, you have to share it because you just, I mean, it's bursting out of you. If it's not bursting out of you, maybe that's the trick, the trickle or the spark is more like what you're dealing with right now. It's okay, it's okay. No, no guilt, no fear. Let's start lifting. Let's just start. Start with little stuff, really little. Smile at someone. People don't smile at each other. You might even say, hey, Jesus loves you. 
it doesn't take, they can look at you funny and you're like, oh. I did that, I did that for like months. I would just tell, tell people, hey, Jesus loves you. And yeah, so I'm, I'm lifting my, my big weights, right? No, I just, t- just do that. But you need to be able to do something because that's, that practice that, of that, that relationship is where it comes from. So this is what you get told all the time in the world, right? So what we're supposed to do is we're supposed to practice and practice and practice, and then we're going to recite our affirmations, and we're, gonna, we're going to uh, do, the, do, this, do this stuff over and over again, and then we'll become what we're supposed to be, right? I want to tell you that's totally wrong. It's more like this. You start out being, and because you are, you do. And then when you do, that causes you to be more of what you already are. It's a loop, and it goes around and around, and it just gets better. So we're like this, this circle here, right? We, we start out uh, becoming before we even know anything about who, who, uh, what we are, uh, before, we, before we have any practice in doing it. Jesus makes us become. And then we get to read, speak, and abide. Jesus says to abide in, in, in him, meditate on him. And then, you know, we, after that, we can believe and we can practice what we've learned and understood. And that helps us to become more. But you know what? If it's, if it's like the world says, there's this missing piece here. Here's what makes the difference between Christians and everybody else. We got life. Everybody else in the world's trying to, to do to be, to do to be, to do to be. And we're the ones who have eternal life. John 6, 47 says, the one who believes has eternal life. That's what we got. So we're supposed to be reflecting the glory of God. As we behold him in the secret place, we become like him. Do you get that? We get transformed into the image of God by looking at him, just looking at him. You don't have to sing special songs or do special prayers or special dances or anything like that. You just look at him. You'll become like him. And then as we read and speak, he says, if you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done. That's pretty powerful. And that gives us the power to go practice. And how we practice, we imitate those who through faith and get this patience. Sorry, patience is in there. We've got to have patience. It takes time. Inherit what's been promised. Notice we get the things that have been promised, the power, by becoming and then, as we believe and practice more, we can become even more. we we'll be transformed by the renewing of our minds. That's what it means to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. That's what the renewing of our minds is. So I want you to understand, you have to be alive before you can grow. So if you're not a Christian here tonight, you're not alive. You can't do this stuff because you don't have the seed of life in you. So if you're not a Christian tonight, I want you to think about that. Come to Jesus. He'll give you life. You don't have to try to do to be all the time. You just be and watch him do, and that makes you be more, and you do more because of that. It's just amazing. It just gets better and better. So Christians, we're like plants, right? We have seeds that start out, and then we get the germ- seeds germinate, then they grow, then they get pollinated, and then we form seeds. And what are you supposed to do with those seeds? That's life. The little tiny dead things that are seeds. You put them in the ground, They produce new life. You naturally produce the seeds of new life in you just by being with God. What is evangelism all about? Well, it's getting those seeds out there. Because when God gives us his life in the word, the word gives us life, the word grows in us, then we grow in the word, then the Holy Spirit brings the word to life in us, and then we naturally produce the seeds of life for other people. That's how it works. It's amazing. Why do you think God made plants and animals look, act like this? This, this is the way it is. So the question I have for you is, how do we, how do we spread those seeds? Well, you can, you can use words, but I want you to know one of the best ways is with your hands. You can demonstrate the power of the kingdom for people, and they will pay attention. I, I can't come up, I can, I can come up to people and say, hey, do you know Jesus? Jesus loves you. That's great. It's really, it's, it's great because they don't necessarily know that. But when I lay my hands on someone's torn knee and they get healed and they have no grid for what just happened and I say to them, would you like to know that Jesus who just healed your knee? 
I don't have to be convincing. He's convincing. So I want you all to, to come on forward here.